the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Sunday morning Mass for the parish of St. Paul the Apostle in New York City. We're filming today from our rectory chapel. During this time of Lent, we're challenged to look at our lives in light of the gospel. So we now call to mind our sins and call to mind God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, by your help, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your son handed himself over to death through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, all my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Egypt, of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there, there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive. To, the vo to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all her iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. A reading in the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, 
if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also to his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, glory to you, o Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha said, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became, became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to Jesus, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, 
I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now, many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what Jesus had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Face to face with death, what does Jesus do? At the scene, he weeps for a friend, yes. He weeps, feeling and sharing the grief of his sisters. Yes, God accompanies us in our deepest sorrows. But is there something more here, something more complicated? Anger at death? A lack of understanding? Why? Why did Jesus die? People were not ready or able to hear the message and take it to heart and repent. So Jesus was surely aware that his own death is near. The encounter with Martha is extraordinary. Jesus reveals himself. I am. Two small words that have an overtone of divinity. And Jesus gives his promise. They who believe in me, even though they die, will live forever. We're living now in a time when we will come face to face with sickness and death of many people that we love. And the deaths of health workers, the deaths of so many people we rely on. In this gospel, Jesus, of course, is speaking to us also. Jesus who takes us beyond death to resurrection. There's a call to believe in this encounter outside of the tomb. Martha finds the faith to respond. How will we find this faith? This is not the first time we meet Mary and Martha in the Gospel. In the Gospel of Luke, there's the story of Jesus' visit to the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. If you remember, Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, like a disciple. She's soaking in the word, taking it to heart. In the Gospel of Luke, this whole section is about discipleship. This is where Jesus says, never look back. The harvest is plenty. The workers are few. Ask the Father to send workers for the harvest. It's also the part of Luke's gospel where we hear of a good Samaritan who puts God's mercy into action. Back to the scene with Mary at the feet of Jesus, teaching. As you remember, Martha was in the kitchen, complaining. She needed a little attitude adjustment, and Jesus speaks to her with love. Jesus always speaks with love, even when 
there's a need to correct. Jesus tells Martha that Mary has chosen the better part. She's learning to be a disciple. So Jesus is reminding Martha of what's important. Let go of anxiety. Serve with love. And Martha has taken the lesson to heart. She's a disciple, open to believe and trust. These lessons we need to learn again and again in each new challenge of life. In the dialogue in front of the tomb, Martha, of course, is still learning. First, she gives out a lament. Oh, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. But then there's a declaration of faith. I know he will rise again on the last day. And with that, Jesus takes her deeper, revealing himself as the resurrection and the life. And Martha is able to proclaim, I have come to believe that you are the Messiah. In the face of death, the sisters trust and believe. How could they do that? Because they have learned the habits of discipleship. What do you do face to face with death? Is here we face a mystery, something we can only partly understand, yet something we can understand better and better. And at those moments, there's such a range of feeling to name and hand over to God. There's anger, regrets, thanksgiving, for the gift of life of this person we miss, and many, many other feelings and thoughts. I learned a lot about this during Holy Week, back when I was in the seminary. That year, there was a television program, Jesus of Nazareth, filmed by Zeffirelli a beautiful, beautiful retelling of the story. And as I watched that with my brother Paulists and then gathered in a small group each night to pray with them, I was very aware that my grandmother was on the edge of death, a person who loved me very deeply. I learned that week to embrace the passion, embrace the sorrow. And I found that in my personal sorrow and in the sorrow of the passion story, my soul, my heart, my feelings were somehow expanded and I was capable of so much more joy. It's a paradox, something that, wow, how could that be true? But yet it, yet it is. Now, how do we get to such a place? Well, our training is what disciples do. We listen, we read the word, we share it. As Catholics, we have many ways to tell the story of Jesus' passion next week. In the gospel on Palm Sunday, we'll read the account of Matthew's Gospel. On Good Friday, we proclaim the Passion according to John. As we hear it together, and as you reread and reflect on the story at home, or pray the story with the Stations of the Cross, or listen to it in sacred music, Pay attention to the feelings. Pay attention to the characters. Pilate, who washes his hands of everything. Simon, 
who helps carry a cross, the crowds, a Roman soldier who is moved to believe, Peter who says, Jesus, who's that? But also John and Mary and Mary Magdalene at the foot of the cross. You could ask in prayer, who am I like in this story? Lent, we have two more weeks before Easter. It's a time to fast, pray, and give. And these Lenten disciplines are designed to make us better disciples. Make following Jesus a habit of life, a habit of the heart. And on the day when it matters most, it will just come out of you like it came out of Martha. Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ. Please join us in our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. In the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God who raised Jesus from the dead as the resurrection and life of all who believe. For church leadership, May the church summon forth life and liberty wherever the worldly powers of fear and death hold people bound. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially those who have perished during this pandemic, may they experience the comfort of Christ through the creative efforts of community members. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the elect, who continue to draw closer to the love and power of Christ during this time of Lent. May they experience Jesus' calling them to life, to be unbounded by whatever holds them back from becoming disciples of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public safety officials, health care workers, and all others who put their health and lives in danger, for the sake of those who have fallen ill with the COVID-19 virus. May they themselves be spared illness and may they receive the blessings promised to the compassionate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us during this time of isolation that prevents us from experiencing our sacramental communion, may we reflect on ways we can still be united with one another and be open to the Spirit's drawing us closer to one another. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, especially Dino and Angela Rossi and Elizabeth Daly, for those who have died and will die during this time of pandemic, and for all those we have known and loved, may they hear the voice of Jesus calling them forth to life and resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the prayers we each hold in the silence of our hearts. May these prayers be united to the prayers of our patron saint, St. Paul, and servant of God, Isaac Hecker. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, with confidence in your mercy, we put all our needs before you. In the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices join with them as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took a cup, again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples. Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you hold us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all who serve in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may come to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We share a sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I'm old enough to remember a time when we had to fast for several hours before we took communion. And um, I remember in the third grade, sister telling me, well, if you're not prepared to take communion, you should say this prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you physically, sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, and I embrace you. I know you are there. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a minute, I think the pastor has given me an announcement. Very good, unless you want to do it? Okay, good. As our time apart physically continues, we would like to reach out to those who may be experiencing more isolation than others. That is, there are some parishioners who do not have a working computer and who would like to be able to talk with another parishioner. So if you're watching, watching this Mass, know of anyone who would like to receive a phone call now and then, please let us know here at the parish. And if you would like to volunteer your time to be that someone who can call and visit a parishioner over the phone, please write us an email or phone the parish office so we can add you to our list of volunteers. Thank you, and thank you all for praying with us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit remain with you forever. Thanks be to God. Let us go in peace and proclaim the gospel with our lives. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.